Welcome to the 2023 Pulitzer Prize Awards. I'm Marjorie Miller, administrator of the Pulitzer Prizes. In a few moments, I will announce this year's exceptional finalists and winners of the 2023 Pulitzer Prizes. But first, I want to turn it over to the co-chairs of the Pulitzer Prize Board, Neil Brown, president of the Pointer Institute, and Tommy Shelby, professor of African and African American Studies and of Philosophy at Harvard University. Gentlemen. Thank you, Marjorie. On behalf of the Pulitzer Prize Board and staff, it is my honor to welcome you to today's announcements. When the Pulitzer Prizes are awarded in journalism, arts, and letters, it represents not only the highest honors in the field, but also an annual renewal of the highest standards of excellence. Across 15 journalism categories and eight in arts and letters, the finalists and winners reveal the power to elevate our understanding of the world through creativity, innovation, and fact-based expression. This year, the storytelling is once again inspiring and extensive. Yet one word describes these amazing efforts, brave. From hidden corners in a schoolhouse to the bombed out apartments of terrified families, to nature's farthest reaches. Journalists took us places that most of us can't go and opened our eyes to events most of us are unable to see. At a time when powerful new technology tools generate both excitement and anxiety, there is nothing artificial about the courageous reporting that we will recognize today. Journalists pay a substantial price for holding the powerful to account. Too often, they are harassed and threatened and even violently attacked and held hostage. In fact, we would like to take particular note of the outrageous and unlawful detention in Russia of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. The Pulitzer Prize Board joins the many organizations around the world demanding Evan's immediate release. He, like so many others, is doing his job. In awarding the Pulitzer Prizes, we celebrate the value of journalism to help us make sense of the world. The finalists and winners we announce today remind us that journalism is not an optional component of our democracy. It is absolutely essential. Now, I'm delighted to turn it over to my colleague, Professor Tommy Shelby. Thank you, Neil. We are here to recognize not only excellence in journalism, but also to honor distinguished work in six book categories and in drama and music. Our mission is to celebrate the finest achievements in arts and letters, while also upholding our unwavering commitment to freedom of expression and to promoting independent, critical, and at times unconventional thinking. These values are vital to the functioning of any democratic society. This year, as always, we are thrilled to highlight a diverse array of truly inspiring and exceptional works of creativity. With remarkable depth and insight, the finalists and winners explore universal themes in refreshingly new and subtle ways. We are astounded by their exploration of the meaning of family and friendship, and their frank representations of the pitfalls of ambition and hubris. And we are astonished by their vivid and moving portrayals of the intense joys and sorrows of love, heartbreak, and loss. These works also turn their gaze toward the darker aspects of human life. They confront the immense inequality and poverty that plague our world the ways in which colonialism, racism, and dispossession continue to shape our relations with one another. The horrors and trauma of war and the abuses of power that threaten the rule of law. In awarding these prizes, we shine a bright light on exemplary work in journalism, arts, and letters. And in doing so, we hope to encourage others to strive for such excellence. We invite you all to learn from, to be moved by, and even to disagree with the work 
we honor today. We now turn things back to Marjorie, who will announce the finalists and winners. Thank you, Neil and Tommy. It is my honor to announce the finalists and winners of the 2023 Pulitzer Prizes in Journalism, the Arts and Letters. I'm pleased to report that once again, we received an abundance of stellar entries, a testament to perseverance by journalists and artists who face constant challenges across the globe. Our juries had their work cut out for them this year with multiple courageous entries from the front lines of the Ukraine war and other global conflicts, and from a home front torn by the massacre in Uvalde and social issues such as abortion rights. We are proud of this journalism and of the thousands of books, plays, and music produced with passion and creativity and honed to a final three standout works in each category. Now, without further ado, let's get to the announcements. We begin with journalism. First, the finalists in breaking news reporting. Staff of the Los Angeles Times for revealing a secret recorded conversation among city officials that included racist comments. Staff of the New York Times for coverage of a Bronx high-rise fire, New York City's deadliest in decades. Josh Gerstein, Alex Ward, Peter S. Canellos, Haley Fuchs, and Heidi Prishbilla of Politico for exclusive coverage of the unprecedented leak of a draft Supreme Court opinion overturning Roe v. Wade. And the prize goes to staff of the Los Angeles Times for revealing a secretly recorded conversation among city officials that included racist comments, followed by coverage of the rapidly resulting turmoil and deeply reported pieces that delved further into the racial issues affecting local politics. Next, our finalists in investigative reporting. Joaquin Palomino and Tricia Thadani of the San Francisco Chronicle for an investigation into the city's failure to fulfill promises to provide safe housing for its homeless citizens. Staff of the Star Tribune, Minneapolis, Minnesota, for exposing systematic failures in the state's juvenile justice system. Staff of the Wall Street Journal for accountability reporting on financial conflicts of interest among officials at 50 federal agencies. And the prize goes to staff of the Wall Street Journal for sharp accountability reporting on financial conflicts of interest among officials at 50 federal agencies, revealing those who bought and sold stocks they regulated and other ethical violations by individuals charged with safeguarding the public's interest. Now, finalists in explanatory reporting. Caitlin Dickerson of The Atlantic for reporting on the Trump administration policy that forcefully separated migrant children from their parents. Dua El Deeb of ProPublica for reporting that clearly demonstrated how the U.S. healthcare system has failed to lower preventable stillbirths in the country. Terrence McCoy of the Washington Post for his sweeping examination of the destruction of the Amazon. And the prize goes to Caitlin Dickerson of The Atlantic for a deeply reported and compelling accounting of the Trump administration policy that forcefully separated migrant children from their parents, resulting in abuses that have persisted under the current administration. Next, finalists in local reporting. John Archibald, Ashley Remkus, Ramsey Archibald, and Challen Stevens of AL.com, Birmingham, for a series exposing how the police force in the town of Brookside preyed on residents to inflate revenue. Staff 
of the Los Angeles Times for coverage of abuses in the state's legal cannabis industry. Anna Wolf of Mississippi Today for reporting that revealed how a former governor used his office to steer millions of state welfare dollars to family and friends, including NFL quarterback Brett Favre. We are awarding two prizes in this category, and the winners are John Archibald, Ashley Remkus, Ramsey Archibald, and Chalin Stevens of AL.com, Birmingham, for a series exposing how the police force in the town of Brookside preyed on residents to inflate revenue, coverage that prompted the resignation of the police chief, four new laws, and a state audit. Also, the prize goes to Anna Wolf of Mississippi Today, Ridgeland, Mississippi, for reporting that revealed how a former Mississippi governor used his office to steer millions of state welfare dollars to benefit his family and friends, including NFL quarterback Brett Favre. Here are the finalists for national reporting. Stephanie Taladrid, contributing writer, The New Yorker, for sweeping and empathetic reporting on individuals caught in the abortion fight in New Mexico, Texas, and Mexico. Joshua Schneer, Mika Rosenberg, and Christina Cook of Reuters, for an expose of how two automakers and a poultry supplier violated child labor laws and exploited undocumented immigrant children. Caroline Kitchener of the Washington Post, for reporting that captured the complex consequences of life after Roe v. Wade. And the prize goes to Caroline Kitchener of the Washington Post for unflinching reporting that captured the complex consequences of life after Roe v. Wade, including the story of a Texas teenager who gave birth to twins after new restrictions denied her an abortion. Now, the finalists for international reporting. Staff of the New York Times for coverage of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, including an investigation into Ukrainian deaths in the town of Bucha. Paul Karsten, David Lewis, Reed Levinson, and Libby George of Reuters for their reporting on the Nigerian military's decade-long campaign of violence against women captured by Boko Haram. Yaroslav Trofimov and James Marson of the Wall Street Journal for reporting from the shifting front lines of the war in Ukraine. And the prize goes to staff of the New York Times for their unflinching coverage of Russia's invasion of Ukraine including an eight-month investigation into Ukrainian deaths in the town of Bucha and the Russian unit responsible for the killings. Here are the finalists for feature writing. Elizabeth Brunig of The Atlantic for exposing the torturous last hours of inmates awaiting execution on Alabama's death row. Janelle Nanos of The Boston Globe for her decade-long investigation of a woman's quest to confirm her childhood sexual abuse. Eli Saslow of the Washington Post for narratives about people struggling with the pandemic, homelessness, addiction, and inequality. And the prize goes to Eli Saslow of the Washington Post for evocative individual narratives about people struggling with the pandemic, homelessness, addiction, and inequality that collectively form a sharply observed portrait of contemporary America. Now, the finalists for commentary. Kyle Whitmire of AL.com, Birmingham, for columns that document how Alabama's Confederate heritage still colors the present with racism and exclusion. Sochil Gonzalez of The Atlantic for columns that explore how gentrification and the predominant white culture in the United States 
stifle the physical and emotional expression of racial minorities. Monica Hesse of the Washington Post for columns that convey the anger and dread that many Americans felt about losing their right to abortion after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. And the prize goes to Kyle Whitmire of AL.com, Birmingham, for measured and persuasive columns that document how Alabama's Confederate heritage still colors the present with racism and exclusion, told through tours of its first capital, its mansions and monuments, and through the history that has been omitted. Here are the finalists for criticism. Lindsay C. Green of the Detroit Free Press for food and restaurant reviews that also serve as a cultural portrait of the city. Andrea Long Chu of New York Magazine for book reviews that use multiple cultural lenses to explore some of society's most fraught topics. Jason Farrago of the New York Times for art and culture reviews, especially those from the front lines of the war in Ukraine. And the prize goes to Andrea Long Chu of New York Magazine for book reviews that scrutinize authors as well as their works, using multiple cultural lenses to explore some of society's most fraught topics. Next, the finalists for editorial writing. Lisa Falkenberg, Joe Hawley, Nick Powell, and the late Michael Lindenberger of the Houston Chronicle for helping Texas readers to understand the Ovalde tragedy. Nancy Ancrum, Amy Driscoll, Luisa Yanez, Isadora Rangel, and Lauren Casentino of the Miami Herald for editorials on the failure of Florida public officials to deliver on promised taxpayer-funded amenities. Alex Kingsbury of the New York Times for highlighting the existential threat of terror and violence committed by right-wing political extremists. And the prize goes to Nancy Ancrum, Amy Driscoll, Luisa Yanez, Isadora Rangel, and Lauren Costatino of the Miami Herald for a series of editorials on the failure of Florida public officials to deliver on many taxpayer-funded amenities and services promised to residents over decades. Here are the finalists for illustrated reporting and commentary. Matt Davis of Newsday Long Island, New York, for his sharp editorial perspective on the year's political figures. Mona Chalabi, contributor, The New York Times, for illustrations that help readers understand the immense wealth and economic power of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. Pia Guerra, contributor, The Washington Post, for her black and white drawings that offer insightful commentary on the year's biggest news events. And the prize goes to Mona Chalabi, contributor, The New York Times, for striking illustrations that combine statistical reporting with keen analysis to help readers understand the immense wealth and economic power of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. Now, the finalists for Breaking News Photography. Photography Staff of Associated Press for Urgent Images from Mariupol during the first weeks of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Rafik Makbul and Iranga Jayawardana of Associated Press for a visual narrative documenting public fury over Sri Lanka's economic collapse. Lindsay Adario of the New York Times for her single image of Ukrainian victims of a Russian mortar attack on a civilian safe passage route. And the prize goes to Photography Staff of Associated Press for unique and urgent images from the first weeks of Russia's invasion of Ukraine 
including the devastation of Mariupol, after other news organizations left, victims of the targeting of civilian infrastructure, and the resilience of the Ukrainian people who were able to flee. Next, the finalists for feature photography. Photography staff of Associated Press for images capturing the vulnerability and trauma of elderly Ukrainians caught in the Russian invasion. Christina House of the Los Angeles Times for an intimate look at the life of a pregnant 22-year-old woman living in a tent on the street. Gabrielle Lurie and Stephen Lamb of the San Francisco Chronicle for their documentation of fentanyl addiction in the city. And the prize goes to Christina House of the Los Angeles Times for an intimate look into the life of a pregnant 22-year-old woman living on the street in a tent, images that show her emotional vulnerability as she tries and ultimately loses the struggle to raise her child. Here are the finalists for audio reporting. Staff of Gimlet Media, notably Connie Walker, whose investigation into her father's troubled past revealed a larger story of abuse of hundreds of indigenous children at an Indian residential school in Canada. Kate Wells, Sarah Hewlett, Lindsay Smith, Laura Weber Davis, and Paulette Parker of Michigan Radio for a documentary recorded behind closed doors of an abortion clinic. Jen Abelson, Nicole Dunka, Rena Flores, Savvy Robinson, and Lena Muhammad of the Washington Post for Broken Doors, an examination of the human toll of no-knock warrants across the country. And the prize goes to staff of Gimlet Media, notably Connie Walker, whose investigation into her father's troubled past revealed a larger story of abuse of hundreds of indigenous children at an Indian residential school in Canada, including other members of Walker's extended family. A personal search for answers, expertly blended with rigorous investigative reporting. And now, the finalists for public service. Associated Press, for the work of Mstislav Ternov, Evgeny Maloletka, Vasilisa Stepanenko, and Lori Hinnant, courageous reporting from the besieged city of Mariupol. The Austin American Statesman, in collaboration with the USA Today Network, for unflinching coverage of law enforcement's flawed response to the massacre in Uvalde, Texas. The Washington Post, for an exhaustive investigation of the fentanyl crisis in the United States and government's failure to address the epidemic. And the prize goes to Associated Press for the work of Mstislav Chernov, Evgeny Maloletka, Vasilisa Stepanenko, and Lori Hinnant, courageous reporting from the besieged city of Mariupol that bore witness to the slaughter of civilians in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now... Let's turn to the 2023 finalists and winners in letters, drama, and music. For drama, the finalists are On Sugarland by Alicia Harris, The Far Country by Lloyd Sa, English by Sanaz Tusi. And the prize goes to English by Sanaz Tusi, a quietly powerful play about four Iranian adults preparing for an English language exam in a storefront school near Tehran, where family separations and travel restrictions drive them to learn a new language that may alter their identities and also represent a new life. For history, the finalists are Freedom's Dominion, a Saga of White Resistance to Federal Power by Jefferson Cowie. Watergate, A New History 
by Garrett M. Graff Seeing Red Indigenous Land, American Expansion, and the Political Economy of Plunder in North America by Michael John Whitkin And the prize goes to Freedom's Dominion, A Saga of White Resistance to Federal Power by Jefferson Cowie a resonant account of an Alabama county in the 19th and 20th centuries, shaped by settler colonialism and slavery. A portrait that illustrates the evolution of white supremacy by drawing powerful connections between anti-government and racist ideologies. For biography, the finalists are G-Man, J. Edgar Hoover, and the Making of the American Century by Beverly Gage. Mr. B. George Balanchine's 20th Century by Jennifer Homitz. His Name is George Floyd by Robert Samuels and Tulu Oloronipa. And the prize goes to G-Man, J. Edgar Hoover and the Making of the American Century by Beverly Gage a deeply researched and nuanced look at one of the most polarizing figures in U.S. history that depicts the longtime FBI director in all his complexity with monumental achievements and crippling flaws. For memoir or autobiography, the finalists are The Man Who Could Move Clouds by Ingrid Rojas Contreras. Stay True by Wa Su. Easy Beauty by Chloe Cooper Jones. And the prize goes to Stay True by Wa Su, an elegant and poignant coming of age account that considers intense, youthful friendships, but also random violence that can suddenly and permanently alter the presumed logic of our personal narratives. For poetry, the finalists are Still Life by the late J. Hopler Blood Snow by D.G. Nanook Oakpik Then the War and Selected Poems 2007 to 2020 by Carl Phillips And the prize goes to Then the War and Selected Poems 2007 to 2020 by Carl Phillips, a masterful collection that chronicles American culture as the country struggles to make sense of its politics, of life in the wake of a pandemic, and of our place in the changing global community. For general nonfiction, the finalists are Sounds Wild and Broken, Sonic Marvels, Evolution's Creativity, and the Crisis of Sensory Extinction by David George Haskell Kingdom of Characters The Language Revolution That Made China Modern by Jing Su Under the Skin The Hidden Toll of Racism on American Lives and on the Health of Our Nation by Linda Villarosa His Name is George Floyd by Robert Samuels and Tulu Oloronipa. And the prize goes to His Name is George Floyd by Robert Samuels and Tulu Oloronipa, an intimate, riveting portrait of an ordinary man whose fatal encounter with police officers in 2020 sparked an international movement for social change, but whose humanity and complicated personal story were unknown. For music, the finalists are Omar by Rhiannon Giddens and Michael Abels. Perspective by Geraldine Patton. Monochromatic Light, Afterlife by Tashawn Sorin. And the prize goes to Omar by Rhiannon Giddens and Michael Abels, an innovative and compelling opera about enslaved people brought to North America from Muslim countries, 
a musical work that respectfully represents African as well as African-American traditions, expanding the language of the operatic form while conveying the humanity of those condemned to bondage. For fiction, the finalists are Trust by Hernan Diaz Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver The Immortal King Rao by Wahini Vara We are awarding two prizes in this category, and the winners are Trust by Hernan Diaz, a riveting novel set in a bygone America that explores family, wealth, and ambition through linked narratives rendered in different literary styles, a complex examination of love and power in a country where capitalism is king. Also, the prize goes to Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver, a masterful recasting of David Copperfield, narrated by an Appalachian boy whose wise, unwavering voice relates his encounters with poverty, addiction, institutional failures, and moral collapse, and his efforts to conquer them. Please make sure to tell your friends and colleagues that they can see the full list of winners and finalists and all of the inspiring journalism on the Pulitzer site, pulitzer.org. Thank you for joining us and congratulations to this year's winners and finalists.